I think he and Woody Pitcat still play hockey. And uh, I don't know what that has to do with the auto racing, except uh, you have tires here in the modifieds, skates, in hockey, but you're going at a great rate of speed in both sports. Ronnie Williams in car number 50. He is on the inside of the third row alongside Woody Pitcat. So we are ready to start the music in the Sunoco Modifieds. And the drum major of our parade, Joe Koss. Here they come through turns three and four, getting set for the first feature event of the night here at the 30th annual Bug 150. Event program gets underway. Double greens shown by Sean Houlihan to top the flag stand, and it's Corey Berry in the 39 to the bottom of turn number one. They'll go three wide for a moment. Here comes Owen challenging up the bottom. Boy, like a bumblebee. Owen trying to buzzsaw his way underneath Berry. He tries it again. Full-fledged news in between turns three and four, but it is Barry by a millimeter as they go into turn one. Barry hanging tough on the outside lane is a veteran Todd Owen runs the bottom, but Owen across the nose of Corey Barry at the exit of turn number two. Good old short track slide job there for the 81. Battle for third now. Williams working the inside of the 50. Kyle James up high in the 16 car. And let's see how much bike Ronnie Williams has as he tries to thunder his way underneath Kyle James. He has some firepower in between turns one and two, but James has more, and James is able to avalanche his way into third. And Rocco's gonna fall back, or Williams, rather, is gonna fall back to the fifth spot as Keith Rocco, 57, gets by using the outside lane. So Keith Rocco went from seventh to fourth in just two laps, a bit deeper in the field. You see Danny Cates in the 79 trying to make some moves. He gets by John Stubbley in the 27. So Cates and Rocco both charging early here in this race. Power move, Kyle James. Will it work? He drives the man up the racetrack, but it is James. He tried to get underneath Barry and came up dry. And James still digging there on the inside lane. It opens up the door up high, though, for Rocco. Rocco trying to crack inside the top three. He gets the job done. Now looking inside is Rocco in turn number three. Sweeps in front of Corey Berry. Berry not afraid to give him the chrome horn off turn number two. And now Rocco settles into second. Well, he gave him the chrome horn, but it wasn't very loud. And Rocco was able to streak into second. Fourth to second on one lap. And now he's going after Todd Owen. Remember, Keith Rocco won the last time we were here. What a move by James as he was able to swashbuckle his way underneath Barry, and he will lead him at the line. Aggressive move by James to go ahead and try to find a way around Barry. Williams now comes right with him, and he works the outside lane. Barry stuck at the bottom. Pitcat in the 10A is going to come around to the high side of the racetrack. Now Williams in the 50, looking inside of James in turn three, nearly coming together off the turn. And he is able to jackknife his way underneath James. So Williams is on the move, but the battle was up at the front. The lead has almost vanished for Todd Owen. Here comes Rocco. Remember, turn number three. That's his favorite area of the track, and he uses that area to take the lead. Side by side, though. Owen hangs tough in the outside lane. They are dead even across. Nerf bar to nerf bar across the start finish line. Owen 81, Rocco 57. Inside lane, the advantage for Rocco. On the eighth lap, Keith Rocco is trying to move into the lead. They are body pierced together. Owen oh, losing a little ground between turns three and four, and Keith Rocco will take over sole control of the lead. Keith Rocco, one of the best in the business here at this racetrack. It's amazing that it took so long for him to get that second win of the season in the last race here, but now he sees a mirror full of Todd Owen. Owen putting heat on Rocco in turn three. As he is able to dynamite his way past Todd Owen into the lead. Ronnie Williams is third. Woody Pitcat has moved up to fourth, followed by Danny Cates. So Cates, last week, he was able to do the same thing. Unfortunately, the car overheated on him, but we have a, a yellow out and a problem right in front of the start-finish line. It looks like Josh Zentek is in distress in car number 81. So that is our first yellow. It comes uh, one-third of the way through on lap number 10. Keith Rocco, he went uh, from winning the first race, second in the second race, third in the third race, fourth in the fourth race. He said he didn't like the way things were going, so he was determined to get back into victory lane, and he did with an exciting win on August 4th, and he made some exciting moves to get from seventh into the lead in just eight laps. So uh, Keith Rocco 
defending series champion here at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park in the Sunoco Modified Division. Now, many times you hear Rocco in victory lane or interviews, he's always pretty quiet. He's oftentimes to the point, but he's not often a jokester. You see him on the bike, you know, he's all business and all race. But this week, he had a little bit of fun on social media this week, and he was playing along with one of the Wheel of Modified Tour competitors in Timmy Salomidoni. You may have seen it, but uh, basically what Rocco did is he went out and he posted a Craigslist ad for a uh, $500 car that was being sold supposedly by Timmy Salomito. And uh, Timmy's phone was ringing off the hook on that, uh, that day. So Timmy went back and forth and had a joke about it. At the end of the day, Salomito, I think, might have scored because Salomito said, hey, you know where the car is? It's at Keith Rocco's race shop. And so they were playing back and forth, a little bit of banter between Rocco and one of the Wheel of Modified Tour drivers, Timmy Salomito. Okay, we have a schedule change, and uh, right after this race, it will be qualifying for the Wheeland Modified Tour. Then the SK Lights will be third. Then it will be the King of Beers 150 will be fourth. Then they will be followed by NEMA, the uh, Limited Sportsman, the Mini Stocks, and our final feature of the night, will uh, consist of the late models. Now, uh, remember after the King of Beers winner is crowned and we have the King, we still have four breathtaking races to go. So it'll be Sunoco Mods, Tour Qualifying, SK Lights, King of Beers 150, NEMA Midgets, Limited Sportsman, Mini Stocks, Late Models, and uh, Dave Barabald, all in that order. Matt, you were talking today about Kyle James's car, he just came in for a quick adjustment. They're telling me that the car is snug in the corner. They're just making an adjustment to try to get it back to where he needs it to be. Well, thank you, Dave. Dave Barabal working pit lane tonight. We've got Pete Falcone with us, Matt Buckler, Derek Pernisiglio with us. I'm Joe Koss. We've got a whole cast of characters here tonight, Matt. I read about him, and that was a great uh, story on the Wheeland Modified Tour website about Derek Pernisiglio. Uh, I didn't know that much about his driving career, but I know in the, when I started here at 2000, Derek was one of the voices here at Thompson uh, Speedway. Our uh, four-man team at that time was uh, Russ Stout, Kyle Ricky Jr., Derek Pernisiglio, and myself. And uh, Derek uh, went from here to national TV. And at the end, among that group, Matt, you are the last one standing. I didn't think of it that way. I would uh, trade uh, Derek for uh, one of those uh, NBC sports shirts. Yeah, no they doubt. Look, right? uh, they look pretty good. So uh, We might be able to talk to somebody and, and get you hooked up there with, with that, Matt. I think we might be able to make that happen. But Derek, one of the success stories here is he started in the booth, and now he is in everybody's living room uh, when those races uh, hit the air. It was a great uh, telecast. I watched it from uh, Stafford last week, and uh, before that it was uh, Max McLaughlin winning the K&N race. So it was a, a pretty good uh, night of sports. I was there doing that one. You guys are calling the modified race. We had it all covered. Green flag is out. And here comes the 57 around the outside. Rocco up top in the 57. Owen digging down the bottom, trying to keep even off two. Boy, if he dug any harder, he would be in China. But he loses second as Woody Pickett is able to swing into the position. Owen's not giving up. He is fighting back against Woody Pitcat. Here's the battle for the third spot now. Owen is starting to backpedal in the bottom lane. Danny Cates, we talked about him. He started in the eighth spot. He's been able to rally up to third. He followed Rocco right on through. But I'm impressed by that 10A Woody Pitcat, who all of a sudden has a whole bunch of momentum on his side for his racing season. And he's right to the back bumper of Keith Rocco. And here's another impressive performance. Troy Tallman started 15th, and now he is pestering uh, Owen for the next position. So uh, coming out of the parking lot to become a factor is Troy Tallman. Now, Troy Tallman was outside of the handicap tonight because he got black flagged in his qualifying season. He tried to take the lead. Meanwhile, we've got problems. 27 to John Studley, smoking to the bottom of turn three and four, lifting that car down the front straightaway. We stay under the green 
flag. But back to Troy Thomas. He was in the lead when he got the black flag during qualifying. That's why he had to start at the back of the pack here tonight. He's got a very quick number three modified. Boy, that Subway car, if they had an auto racing version of the Walking Dead, that would be it. And it finally rolls to a stop between turns one and two, and the yellow comes out for the second time on lap number 13. So uh, problems for John Studley. When he can keep that car healthy, uh, Joe, it usually is in the top tier of the field. He's been very quick, but tonight all tires are up, so the issue appears to be a problem with the motor on that 27 machine for John Studley. So Woody Pitcat in that 10A a couple of weeks ago, Matt, doubled up here in competition at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. He hasn't had a day like that in years here at this racetrack. He's a champion both in the late model division and in the Sunoco Modifieds here. The last couple of years haven't been kind to Woody Pitcat. No, and he said he had never done that before at Thompson, winning in both the late models and the Sunoco Modifieds on the same day. So uh, he has fit right in in the late models with the Jeff Hartwell team as uh, they have gotten used to their driver and he has gotten used to that team. And in the Sunoco Modifieds, he is driving for one of the legends, Dan Avery. And uh, Dan Avery, Dan was very happy to see Woody get that win a couple of outings back. So uh, Woody Pitcat is back being Woody Pitcat. And he, I think he was under an alias uh, at some times uh, during the last few years, but he is back to being Woody. Woody Pitcat's home track is Stafford Speedway. Grew up just outside the racetrack, but this particular track has always been very, very good to him. When he won that championship uh, over a decade ago in late model competition, and then came back and got strengthened with the uh, Stan Burtz team in the six modified that he still runs now, but in open tour type shows, not here in uh, Sunoco modified division. Uh, Pitcott has done very, very well here at Thompson over his career. It was in 2006 when Woody Pitcat won the NASCAR regional championship, the way they did it back in those days, they uh, split the country into four regions and Woody was able to win here in the Northeast. And right now, we are going to be a winner with some information from Dave Barabal. Well, we've caught up with Josh Zentek, and Josh, can you tell us what happened to the 81 tonight? Uh, yeah, I was running in about 10th there, and uh, coming off of turn four, something in the right front broke. I think it was the shock, as uh, the spring came off before I even hit the wall. Some people behind the number 81 you like to thank for getting you here tonight. Uh, yeah, my mom and dad, uh, Chuck McDonald, my spotter, Glenda Reeves, uh, his girlfriend, uh, that's all that's here today, but um, Greg Damone, who's a 68 late model driver at Stafford, uh, he's having surgery today, so I'd like to wish him the best. You guys, there you have it from Josh Zetek, a tough break for the number 81. Lots of damage on the right side of that number 81. He did hit the wall pretty good here, uh, Dave. He got it right in front of one of the cameras that'll be used for the NBC Sports broadcast uh, later tonight for the Wheel and Modified Tour tape delayed broadcast, and so there was a good look at how that damage was in the 81. It was pretty significant. Yeah, I think he Richter scaled it. A pretty substantial hit. Our leader is Keith Rocco. 13 laps in. And Woody Pitcat in second. And maybe the surprise, Danny Cates has one career win at Thompson in a Sunoco Modified. But uh, he took some time off. That car is owned by the Jensen family out of Wilkett, a familiar name in Connecticut Motorsports. Danny Cates was able to climb in, and he has gotten a lot of success from it. Ted Christopher drove that 79 to his 99th Thompson victory for his final win in his career. And the 99 wins of Ted Christopher that sits in the black and white checkerboard here at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park in critical signs victory lane, that 79. You always would have thought it would have been the 13 car at the end of uh, Teddy's career, but it was that 79 car, red and black, that Teddy won that September day at the end of the season. And now the 79 driven by Danny Cates, having a pretty strong run here tonight. Yeah, the devil, an electrician out of the Lebanon area, actually Chaplin, Connecticut. And he is uh, surprising everyone tonight. Ronnie Williams right behind him in car number 50. And then it is Todd Owen and Troy Tallman running six. I mean, here's a guy, Matt, and Ronnie Williams in the 50s. 
who has won just about every big modified show there is on the schedule this season. Uh, this guy has been unstoppable here throughout 2019. He's got one win here at Thompson, Dave, but Ronnie Williams has just been so good everywhere he goes. Guys, another car up down here with me, John Studley. John, can you tell me what knocked out the 27? I believe it's definitely the motor again. We had uh, an issue two races ago. We, we uh, took a look at it. Everything looked good, and tonight it seemed like it let go again. So we'll see. We'll take it apart and take a look at it, and uh, hopefully it's not that bad. Tough break for the 27 team, guys, as we get ready to go green. Yeah, he will have to spend the rest of the night in the penalty box, and Joe, we get ready to come up to speed. And pit cat on the bottom. Rocco to the outside lane as the green flag waves once again. 13 laps into the 30 lap Sunoco modified feature event. It's Rocco running the high group, but Pitcat challenges on the bottom. And he will wave goodbye to Pitcat, but now here comes Williams. As Williams, he's almost crazy glued to the back bumper as they rabble rouse their way off the corner. Keith Rocco is in control. Here's Ronnie Williams in the Adam Scavora home number 50 modified, challenging Keith Rocco. No love loss between Rocco and Williams, first and second at the top of the field. Remember on May 19th, Ronnie Williams got a win by getting by Keith Rocco on the final turn of the final lap. We could be headed to a similar finish tonight. Pitcap holding his own in third, getting an intrusion from Danny Cates. Then it is Owen in fifth. Here comes Williams, turn three, bottom shot, halfway there, three quarters of the way there. Can Rocco hold them off? Here they come off turn number four. The answer to that question for the moment is yes. Rocco hangs on to the top spot, but they dive quickly back into the banking of turns one and two, and Williams gathering up speed as they exit turn two. Pitcat gathering up speed too with car number 10. He could become a factor. The top four can fit inside a Cracker Jack box. Here comes Rocco. He's a little lower this time around. And uh, Williams is bottled up behind him. Williams is there as they get down to turn number one. In the tire tracks, only about a foot half the back bumper of Keith Rocco on the back straightaway. Williams lets him know that he's there, getting down into turn three, and Rocco protects the inside group. Williams all over the back bumper like a trailer hitch. Let's see what happens. Turn number two. Will Williams try anything? He usually saves his heroics for turn three. It's a little easier to pass getting down into turn three. The racetrack is a little bit smoother here at Thompson as you watch the cars off the end of the front straightaway, Matt. It gets really bumpy for these modified past the start finish line, making it tough to pass right there through the bump in turn one, and Rocco holds on. Williams all over Rocco, like bring around the collar. Here we go into turn three, and Rocco, a little forearm shiver, to the back bumper of the Rocco car, but it is hard to mess with Keith Rocco. He maintains his slender lead. For a decade, Rocco has been one of the drivers you've got to be, if not the driver. You've got to be here in Sunoco Modified Competition at Thompson Speedway. Williams, taking a peek on the back straight away, not close enough to dive into the inside lane, and holds his line for the time being. And Danny Cates is out of the race. He heads on to Pitt Road for the second race in a row. Cates is unable to finish. The action heats up at the front. Here is Owen as he is tormenting the back bumper of the Woody Pitcat car. Looked inside, getting into turn number three. Rolls out of the throttle, didn't have enough room to make the move work, and they'll stay single file back in line. Eight laps to go. Rocco and Williams putting out a clinic in the front. And Rocco is pretty good at the end of races, and so is Williams. So this is strength against strength. Bottom shot move as Williams tries to blur underneath Keith Rocco, but Rocco holds him off again at the line. Get down onto that flat, getting into turn three, and you've got two tires you're trying to make turn, while Rocco is able to keep his foot pinned to the floorboard of the outside lane. The momentum worked for Rocco that time three. One car length advantage getting down into turn three. Williams higher than Rocco this time for the turn. Rocco leading by a tongue depression over Williams. Let's see what happens as they swashbuckle their way into turn number two. Rocco has a comfort zone for now, but how long will it last? Not very long at all. Williams is there, taps the back bumper of Rocco, getting down into turn three. They come to the line. It'll be five laps to go this time by. Williams now looking to the bottom in turn one. Well, it looked like he had some leverage, but then he backs off. Here comes Pitcat to move in. So Williams makes one mistake. He will have Pitcat down his throat. 
three car lengths back to Pit Cat. The Pit Cat has started to close quickly. Rocco starting to slow this group up a little bit, making it hard for Williams to find a way around. Four circuits to go. A breathtaking battle between Rocco, Williams, and Pit Cat. What will Williams do? Heading into three, here he comes. Like Soda, out of a shaken can, trying to wrestle the lead away from Rocco. Rocco pinches Williams down, coming up off the turn. It stalls the momentum of Williams again. That time, when Rocco fends off another challenge. Off turn number two, he's now got a car length and a half advantage to the back straightaway. And right now, he leads by about the length of a diving board. If that is moving in, we are down to the final two. It is a two-lap tussle for the trophy. And Williams once again moves into striking distance. He, we are heading for his favorite corner. Down the back straightaway, Williams charging on Rocco. Taps him getting down in the turn. This time, Williams goes high for turn three and four. Will he try the crossover move as they come to the white flag? And it is Rocco with the upper hand. He beats Williams into turn number two. But out of the shadows, here comes Williams. Trying to make a move to the inside. And here he comes, Rocco holding him off. Williams looks high, now he darts down to the inside, up off turn number four. To the line they come, and Keith Rocco, for the third time this season, wins to the Sunoco Modifieds underneath the double checkers. Ronnie Williams, a valiant effort, will come up short. He'll slide into the second spot. Woody Pinkat was third, Todd Owen was fourth, and then Troy Talman rounding out your top five. But Matt, determination and grit Keith Rocco, his second consecutive Sunoco Modified win, and he now will extend his championship lead, heading in with three races left to be played out here in the 2019 season. Yeah, it was Troy Tallman fifth, Noah Corner sixth, Corey Berry seventh, Kyle James eighth, Adam Gaeta ninth, Danny Cates was tenth, Justin Albernaz eleventh, and twelfth was Paul LaPlante, and thirteenth John Burcham, and fourteenth John Studley, and 15th, John Zentak. So we get ready for Critical Signs Victory Lane, and Critical Signs also does window tinting, and if you want your windows tinted, head over to Critical Signs and tell them that Sean uh, sent you, uh, you saw their uh, Victory Lane uh, sign, and they will give you 10% off your uh, window tinting price. So that is a pretty good deal as we await the arrival of uh, Keith Rocco, the first driver to win two uh, Sunoco uh, races, has won three. And uh, we see Kyle Sousa out to uh, congratulate our winner. And we will have the trophy presentation as soon as Keith Rocco climbs out of the car. And you know, at, a, at the advanced age of Rocco, he likes to take his time and soak in the spotlight. What's but he, he like, 33? Yeah. But uh, he went, what, from 7th to 5th in one lap. Then he went from 4th to 2nd today in one lap. And here he comes out of the car. Keith Rocco will get our championship trophy as he has enough energy to wave his fist in the air. Then we will bring in John Vikarczyk. And he will be giving a $75 award to Keith Rocco from Draco Springs. So the uh, trophy presentation is uh, completed. Cassie's uh, birthday month, I guess, is finally over. Cassie Rocco and the whole Rocco family is celebrating. Also, the 11th place finisher will get $50 from Napa. And the 5th place finisher will be getting $50 from TA Engines. So third win of the season for Keith Rocco. His son KJ presented him with the trophy here, a very special trophy here on this Bud 150 night. So the grassroots man, Keith Rocco, gets another win. Let's go down to Dave Barable. And as Keith gets his check, Keith, three battles tonight. Early it was Todd Owen. In the middle it was Woody Pitcat. And at the end, Ronnie Williams. How are you able to drive into Sunoco Victory Lane? Yeah, you know, this car, this, this uh, Troy race car is absolutely awesome tonight. Uh, Got to thank Petter for the awesome horsepower under the hood. Mark and Mike Payne, Eminem Stone Creations. They couldn't make it tonight, but without them, I can't do what I do. Uh, D&G Paven, b and Maintenance, Mikey and Beth, thanks. I appreciate everything. Wheelers Auto, uh, Dunlevy Truck and Trailer Repair, 811, call before you dig. Hocon Industrial Gas, and uh, Dunlevy Truck and Trailer Repair, and uh, my whole team. I can't do without any one of them. 
And guys, kind of like he went to the lead in the 30 laps, quick and complete. Keith Rocco, your winner in tonight's Sudoku Modified Main Event. I think Keith Rocco, uh, Joe, is a guy I've never seen him stand still. Maybe right now, posing in uh, victory lane. That's about the only time you'll see him when he is not moving. One of the hardest workers in motorsports. Rocco, certainly uh, this is his business. Engine builder by trade. Works for uh, Mike Pettit Racing Engines all the way out in New Milford. So from one corner of the state to another is where Rocco covers the modified action and obviously a national champ and a very, very talented driver here today picking up another victory, trying to see if he can win yet another track championship here at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. So everybody gathering for some more photos here in Victory Lane. Remember, the schedule change will put qualifying up next for the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour. And, Matt, we're doing group qualifying once again here tonight, five-minute groups for these teams to go out on track. Always entertaining, always exciting. And the two guys at the top of the practice charts tonight, well, they were none other than Doug Kobe and Justin Bonsignor. And they will be in the final group. Uh, just to explain group qualifying, we have 32 cars on hand tonight, and they will be divided into three groups based on practice times. The slower cars will go out first, then the cars in the mid-range will be in second, and then all the big guns will be going last. Now, each session is five minutes long, and the objective is to go out and get one fast lap. Now, you can... Uh, 